This episode is brought to you by the Newman Center for the Performing Arts. Because they're bringing Aoife O'Donovan and Hocktail to Denver for a concert on Saturday, March 30th. So if you loved O'Donovan's thrice Grammy-nominated album, Age of Apathy, this is your chance to see her live. Rolling Stone called it stunning, so you should probably check it out. And Hocktail is a progressive bluegrass supergroup who have worked with Punch Brothers, Dave Rawlings Machine, Crooked Still, and a bunch of your favorite acoustic and Americana acts. Tickets are on sale now to catch Aoife O'Donovan and Hocktail at the Newman Center on Saturday, March 30th. You can find more info at the link in our show notes. Today on CityCast Denver, it is officially time to duke it out over the proposal to widen Pena Boulevard. And this week, City Council was split down the middle. So we're talking traffic on the way to the airport and all the other stories that matter to Denverites this week, including the chaos at the big Bucky's opening in Johnstown. I was there. Were you? Today is Friday, March 22nd. I'm Paul Caroli, and here's what Denver's talking about. Welcome back to CityCast Denver, the home of the music venue that sells more White Claw than any other single business in America. Brie, can you guess it? Uh, what? Us? The venue? Yeah, the venue. Oh, well, I, I mean, you know it's it. Red Rocks. Yeah. Can I just say, I didn't think this would have been a story if it was like, Red Rocks sells more Coors Light than anyone else. I found this story yeah, to be weirdly sexist. <laughs> sexist? Well, who do they, who drinks White Claw? Me. Also Katie? me. Us. <laughs> okay, who who is characterized as being the drinker of the White Claw? I, I see what you're saying. You feel like the Would brand the is like a little more feminine. the Cheshire's of the world, not... Well, it's feminized in like how... It's not necessarily... I don't know. It's just like it's an assumption that's made. And so that's how I read that story was like... That's the girlies love White Claw so much. And like also their giant ticket concert. They're like ticket buyers. So, yes. Um, that was a fascinating story, I thought, from our <laughs> our friend John Wenzel at the Denver Post. Sorry, John. He's putting you on blast a little bit. Um, personally, nope, Nothing personal, John. I, I love thought it was you. a great story. It was, it was a good 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 scoop on that data. Here's, here's the actual number. They sold 254,640 cans of White Claw at Red, Claw, at Red Rocks. Maybe they should call it Red Claw yeah. in 2023. Um, and Brie, I learned this week, it's a Canadian product. <laughs> How about that? I have to mention that. That's Katie, part of my citizenship. Oh. Paul's Canadian. Oh, I never <laughs> yeah. would have guessed. So uh, that's, uh, is it surprising? Maybe it's not that it's a Canadian product. 200, a quarter million cans. Yeah. This doesn't count all the cans in the parking lot that are being sold probably for a dollar <laughs> out of someone's cooler. Being being sort of tossed to each other, dripping with, yes. listening with condensation from hot young person to hot young person in the ad that I'm imagining for White Claw. Exactly. And also, I've never had White Claw because it was invented after I um, stopped drinking. So it's like someone explained it. Maybe Olivia explained it. It's just watery, watery alcohol drink. How would you describe it, Katie? <laughs> I would describe it, honestly, have you ever had emergency or airborne oh mm, yeah emergency. actually i like do love both of a those. lot like those but with alcohol oh my mm-hmm. god you're selling me now yep. i am oh wait they're coming out with a non-alcoholic one right that's what olivia was saying yeah yeah i don't know about that just regular white cloth seltzer I mean, hey I'm some sure of us want to have the experience that you're having <laughs> you're gonna love it <laughs> you're gonna love it um it's friday we're here at the 5280 magazine studios you've heard her voice brie davies our host is here hey brie hi and uh let's introduce our guest you've heard her as well katie cheshire from westward is back she reports on pickleball excel energy all kinds of interesting stuff katie welcome back to the show hello katie white claw any other thoughts on on red rocks and white claw (laughs) do you like red rocks i like red rocks but i'm slowly coming around to it's too hard to get there to be Mm. worth it Mm -hmm. yeah the Mm -hmm. the process the whole yeah it's like a thing you get used to and then maybe sometimes you go why am I doing Why? this again? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I Which heard is... there was some talk about them doing like uh, buses again. There's oh. people on council, I think, talking about that. Well, and I know Ian Thomas Tafoya was pushing, I think, for rail there, or rail? maybe it was a bus system of more regular, like a more organized, regular hmm. thing. So yeah, could be change great... coming. That would be great. I would be uh, super into that. So. Um, before we get to our top story today, we have a little bit of business. Uh, it's actually something of a celebration. Because tomorrow, March 23rd, is our third anniversary. That is CityCast so Denver, three years. Three years, Paul. How many episodes? Almost 700? 800. 800. 
congratulations. Yeah. You too. Thanks. So cool. Um, work. And if you listeners are, are out there and thinking, hey, you want to get us a little present, you can become a member of CityCast Denver today. That'd be the best way to show your appreciation to make sure you keep us going strong for years and years to come. Um, that's for as little as $8 a month. Uh, you get access to an ad-free podcast feed, but also just the sense of satisfaction of knowing that you support local journalism and, and your city. That would be a supreme birthday present. We would love it. But also... <gasps> We'll also maybe give you a present. I, I do have a couple of presents to give out. Okay. Yeah. For the first two people to become members uh, at, on the day that this episode comes out, the first two people to come become members, um, I'll, I'll send you a CityCast mug. It's got the Hey Denver logo. That's our newsletter. It's a beautiful it's mug. It's a very nice mug. Um, we, and uh, I'd love to give those out to a couple of people who become members at membership.citycast.fm slash Denver. And these are like handmade mugs. These are not like the mug with the crappy print on them. These are beautiful mugs. They're extremely nice. And I've they're been... big. If you're a big mug person, it's good size. How many ounces would you say? I don't know. 16, 20? Yeah, it's a good size. Around there. Um, all right, let's get to our top story. Uh, the airport. It's a pain to get there. Uh, you could take the notoriously unreliable A-line, or you could brave the traffic and drive on the only highway that leads to DIA. That's Pena Boulevard. Uh, the traffic is as bad as it's ever been. So on Monday, city council voted seven to six to pay $5 million for a study looking into widening Pena Boulevard um, or addressing the congestion issue in other ways. Um, but this is a very controversial issue. Katie, you were reporting on this. You were reporting on city council's vote on Monday. Um, tell us about the, the debate that led to this vote. So basically, the two sides, and it's pretty rare these days for city council to do a vote that's seven to six because they tend to either all really agree with a few people dissenting or all really disagree. And so the way it ended up was the six people who voted not to send this $5 million were concerned that in the study, they're only considering a few select options, mainly various ways to add another lane to the road or even what it would be to just leave the road as it is. And those who are against it are concerned that there's not going to be an exploration in the study of what if we built out more public transit as part of the project to decrease traffic on Pena. Right. Like why can't the trains on the A-line be more frequent? Why can't they be more reliable? Why can't we have more buses out to the airport? Correct. And the airport has said, you know, that's not really us. That's RTD. And so we're not sure how we would even do that because we'd have to go through an entirely different system. Yeah, and I had a conversation with the uh, the PIO, the, the chief PR person for the airport last week about this. And she, uh, I don't know, just the way she was talking about it, she seems very frustrated by this, this connection that people are making. Like, why not just do more A-line stuff? Like, she just feels like they have no control over it. They have no power over it. It's <laughs> RTD's thing. They have no say in it. Don't ask her about it anymore. That's basically the vibe I was getting. I don't know about you, Katie. Yeah. And I do understand at some level why there would be that frustration is like all of these people hate us and they're yelling at us about something that is not our problem. Like, yeah. But on the other hand, and this is pointed out by council member Sarah Parody, if they don't examine these options in the study, then they are not options anymore. Yeah. And we can't go back and say, oh, we would rather do this because this study is to meet federal requirements about the environment that you have to study before you do big projects. And so that's really, from the legal perspective, the concern is if we don't put these in the study, then we're out of options. And so I definitely understand sort of both ways. Of course, the airport's annoyed that they're having to take on something that's not really under their view, but also if they don't do it, that could be really damaging. Yeah. Yeah. Bree, we've been covering this fight. What do you make about this debate? Yeah. I mean, I was laughing earlier with the DIA spokesperson's comments because we have to like pull back a little bit here. This airport was built in 1995. The A-line to the airport was built in, opened in 2016, 21 years after the airport was built. The transportation, transit has never been a priority for the airport. And the elected leaders that made these decisions to build the airport where it is, it was not a priority for them either. 
and they were representing their constituents at the time. These were folks that we voted into office. So it's never been a priority. And it, I can see where council, current council's frustration is, which is like, when is it going to become a priority? When are we going to prioritize the climate? When are we going to prioritize better transit options that help people make these decisions to like maybe not drive? And there, also, I think you might have brought, I feel like you maybe brought this up in your piece, Kitty, that studies show like growing a highway doesn't, it doesn't do anything but make it, it continues to be congested. It doesn't change things. It doesn't make things quicker. It doesn't, it doesn't really do much. And so I just find the dissonance here between like, the realities of how we prioritize transit in general to be so clear and to have the airport say we're kind of hands off about it, it's RTD's problem, makes me a little bit really frustrated with them. I, I find it frustrating as well, but I don't think it's, to me, it's not about them. It's about this system of like, the airport is the one that's collecting all this revenue from parking, from concessions, et cetera. It's a big money maker. It's a huge money maker. We can tell by how much public art is out there. Yeah, for sure. But <laughs> but so they have the money, you know, but then they don't have the control over the, the public transit. So I feel like there needs to be some third party or some greater power. Maybe it's a state issue. Maybe it's a state agency that comes in and settles this or adjudicates this because it does seem like like if you talk to anyone at CDOT or that's the Colorado Department of Transportation or the De Denver Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, really anyone in the urban planning circles at all, they'll all say widening a highway is not the best thing. Like this is kind of an established fact. Also, we're not trying to retrofit to an airport from the 60s. We're talking about urban planning that happened in the 90s. We that's, made this yeah. decision in the so 90s, folks. Mm. This is not like we didn't know better. We knew better. We knew better than to prioritize highway usage over public transit usage. And we still made that decision. So it doesn't mean it can't be undone. I think that's also what council is saying. Like, how can we start to change, fundamentally change how our city is built, you know, infrastructure wise? Let's start changing it. Hmm. And I, I don't know. I, I, Katie, you made the point to the the divisiveness of this, right? The the seven to six vote. We don't see that very often. That struck me. I don't know if that struck you just watching city council pretty often, but like seeing such a close vote is very rare. Definitely. And I think that is definitely mirrored in the divisiveness from people, you know, a lot of people on the internet have been very mad about this, which I know that you all know. <laughs> and I think it's interesting when those things start to actually impact policy and really be listened to, because for the longest time it is these environmental activists or these transit activists are being annoying to us and we're trying to get things done. And now there's this recognition from city council that they really have a point and we should probably actually think about that when we're making decisions. You know, I remember when I came to college at Regis University in 2016, it was the I-70 expansion. Mm. It was like you got to college, you moved to your new city, and then immediately all of my like activist friends were like, we need to go protest this highway. And I was like, okay, we're going. We're going to <laughs> protest the highway. <laughs> and it happened anyway, right? Right. That and expansion so happened anyway. There is that history too for people who have been around even just as long as that, that you can remember how you didn't get listened to before. And I think that definitely plays a role in how this is playing out as well. So Katie, you, you kind of pointed out that now really is the time for this debate to play out. We had this vote. What's next? So now they will do the study and it's actually an $18 million study because the airport is chipping in another $13.5 million. That study will examine the environmental impacts of all the different ideas, you know, the practical impacts of the different ideas. And in the study, it will also examine ways to incentivize people to use public transit because the airport has said, you know, that's what we can do mm. versus actually building it out or looking at those options. And then after that, they'll decide of the options, which one is the best, and then they will start a major construction project that will probably last many, many years. <laughs> yeah, they were saying, like, wouldn't even start till 2027. That's what the airport person told me. Yeah, so we're still years out from this. But so maybe it's just not real for folks yet. They're not ready to have the have the real fight. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be curious to see because I think there's a message being sent. Katie, your point is so great. This has become a thing that beyond transit activists people care about, 
which is the environment and more options other than driving. And I, I'm curious to see how that plays out with our decisions about something that's so crucial to our city, which is the airport. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Well, listeners, we want to hear from you. Um, what do you think about widening Pena Boulevard? Is is that the best way to fix this issue? I mean, I don't even know if I would agree that it is a problem, honestly, traffic at the airport. Because every time they talk about it, okay, we're getting into a whole other thing. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. But every time they talk about it, they talk about the airport being busier than ever. But like, aren't some of these people like going to other cities? Like they're going to the airport and then flying to other cities. They're not all... Anyway, I have whatever. tons of friends that work at the airport too, and I would love to hear from them yes. because I know that what it takes, like you drive there and then you park in an employee parking lot and then you wait for a bus and then you take a bus to the airport. So like your, your um, commute itself takes a long time. If there was, you could jump on a train, you know what I mean? If it was more frequent, mm -hmm. especially for the workers and that was a better option. I bet the work, I mean, I think I see the benefit for the workers, if anything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, if you work at the airport, we'd love to hear from you. But if you use the airport, we'd love to hear from you, too. What do you think about widening Pena Boulevard? Um, call in at the uh, highway hotline and leave us a message or send us a text. The number is 720-500-5418. Again, that number is 720-500-5418. Um, right now, we're going to go to a break, come back, talk about Bucky's. Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. All right, we're back. Uh, we saw it with In-N-Out Burger. We saw it at Casa Bonita. And this week, Denverites and the local press went crazy for another long-awaited cult restaurant to open here in Colorado. This Monday at 6 a.m., the Texas-based chain of more than a gas stations, Bucky's, opened um, with lines stretching out into the parking lot. Katie, <laughs> did you get caught up in the excitement? I did, and I watched probably way too many videos of random people in their pajamas at 6 a.m. going to a <laughs> convenience store. But it just kept shocking me. It felt like you turn the lights on and the rows and rows just keep unveiling. Like there's so much more space in there. I have no concept of what 78,000 square feet is. So to me, <laughs> I was like, massive. this is giant. I can't believe that there's still more room like everywhere you turn. <laughs> Yeah, this is such an interesting. I mean, because it's it's a gas station, right? At the end of the day, there, there is a gas there. It's There's like a like It's a travel pumps. center. It's a. Uh, it's a barbecue. It's restaurant. a truck stop. It's a truck stop. It's it's a clothing store. I was there last night. <laughs> I've got a whole ton of notes here. I don't know Paul, if you all want to dig into this. why don't you regale us? Cause... Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, when you pull off, I went with my lovely wife, Megan, who grew up about 15 minutes from where they built the Bucky's in beautiful, oh, sweet little so Mead, Colorado. For Megan's take on I this. I know. Okay. It, was, it was so good to go with her um, because f as soon as we got off the highway, she was like, well, first of all, none of these roads existed. So they built a whole new like network of roundabouts and parking lots. And then we pull up. It's like 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. The parking lot is slammed. It is so full. Every single space is filled except for the Tesla charging station <laughs> spaces. <laughs> But the overflow is going out into these frontage roads where there's no parking signs and people are just like, who cares? You know, we're at Bucky's. This is the Bucky's time. Uh, boy. That, it was so like, it was that crowded still? It was. I asked the okay. cashier. She said it's been bedlam every day. Oh, those poor cashiers. After oh. 5 p.m. Well, I, I mean, there's more about that. They post their wages and their hiring for like managers and benefits. They do 401k matches. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. I mean, I bet they have better benefits than a lot of places. It looks pretty good. It's kind of like- Honestly, it seemed like a good place to work. Like In-N-Out starts at like 18 to $22 an hour. That's better than 
some of my journalism jobs I've had. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a few weeks on, ago on the show, I talked about how they were building this place and how it struck me as like the architecture struck me as very biblical because it's so big and it's up on the top of a hill. I was right on point. <gasps> there is a Christian oh, message at of Bucky's course. underlying the whole place that people do not talk about. They sell t-shirts that say, he is risen. John three sixteen. because Stone Cold said so. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one. But I did see, have you heard the good news? He lives. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, this is just like Chick-fil-A. and It's almost Easter. Maybe it's a seasonal product line. I, they had I so much Easter stuff. Optimism, Katie. If, <laughs> if you want a t-shirt, an Easter t-shirt with the Bucky's beaver on it, they got it. They okay. got it. All right. Um, <laughs> one thing they don't sell uh, are bumper stickers that say Bucky's is better than Meow Wolf and Casa Bonita, oh. which I think is a missed do they opportunity. Have any, do they have any bumper sticker merch like that? You know, Tons. where is Waldrug? Where the heck is Waldrug? Have you guys seen those stickers? No. Those have been around. Den- those have been around Colorado for decades, and Waldrug is not here. I think it's like in North Dakota. What or is something. Waldrug? I think it's a situation like this. It's a just another one massive of these? gas station y kind of thing that people get excited about. Huh. So Katie, you're from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Do you all have a local chain that you'd be excited about you'd get in line for? We have in Albuquerque many local chains that I wish were here. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly this like my hottest take is that here we have no real breakfast burritos. Ooh, and wow. so spicy. It is. RIP your inbox. Yeah, no, it, it's, and at Westward, they do not like that opinion. But I, I don't like, like that opinion, honestly. I'm getting a little fired up. I know, I was like, as a Santiago's person, I don't like that opinion. <laughs> Santiago's is okay. But where's the breakfast burrito in New Mexico you want here? I, there's a place called Golden Pride. Mm. It is a drive through breakfast burrito place. They also have like fried chicken, carne alivada burritos. It's a great place, green chili stew, and that is, I would be there probably every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I would n- never eat anything except for that ever again. Every time I go to Albuquerque, the first place I go, when I'm driving back out of town, I drive through and I buy like 12 burritos and <laughs> I eat them for All the rest right. of the week. Just come here. Katie will be your customer at the very least. <laughs> yes. What's it called? Golden something? Golden Pride. Golden yes. Pride. I'm Interesting. Of cliffs or... Frontier. Places well, I Golden like Pride is the there. same as Frontier. Okay, but it's like sort of their faster, casual. Oh, then I will option. also be there. Frontier okay. is where I. They go have the go same tortillas, so oh. yeah, sounds amazing. Um, Paul, can we? Okay, the Christian thing though. Now I'm thinking about. I have my friend. I have a Texas mm-hmm. Stan. My friend Issa Jones, who used to live here, um, but she was like, "You guys are you're." You've been talking about uh, Bucky's a lot this week. Have you talked about how the owner's son was caught um, filming, secretly filming inside his multiple residences, his friends? He had oh, twenty. Boy. He had like multiple cameras filming his friends at their lake house, like while they were changing, while they were using the bathroom. I don't know. I'm just saying, Ugh. the son of the Bucky's. That's not great. Owner is not great. I mean. <laughs> hypocrisy yeah i guess i guess that's what we expect We're though, all right it doesn't who cares everybody mistakes. wants their barbecue sandwich the barbecue the food we should talk about because could the, you what did you see tell me this i, I don't, saw so much okay. it's like two-thirds food there's a big barbecue counter in the middle where they've got guys chopping meat like big hunks of meat and then they all shout and sing together the employees which is pretty fun it's like there's this camaraderie that you feel in the store because all the employees they're like oh it's like joe's crab shack or cold stone familiar a little bit like cold stone Stone. do they do that at cold stone it is a cold stony kind of a thing um but like whenever there's a new like a new rack of sandwiches that they're putting down the chute for you to grab they'll be like I don't know. They'll shout something. I don't know what they. Interesting. Sing. So okay. that's fun. And then they have like a whole bunch of fountain drinks, and then you know uh, they have their own products, um, which I have some. We could try. I brought a few in if you okay. want. We could do a little live taste. Yeah. What do you got, Paul? I I don't know anything about the cuisine. I love taste testing. Yeah. We have um we got Bucky's. Some of these are open. Sorry, Bucky's Light Delights Vanilla oh, those meringues. Are like meringues. Okay. Katie, I'm gonna send those down to you. Okay. Um, we got. Chili cheese and crackers. Oh boy, Bree, that's a fresh, that's fresh like a corn pack nut? for you. Okay. And then right. the last one, which I already had several of, is a <laughs> salted caramel churro cashews, huh. um, which was okay. one of my favorite things. But while you two do that, I'm just gonna say more about my impressions. I had the veggie burrito, the only vegetarian option I could find in there. It was disgusting. <laughs> 
<laughs> the food was horrible. Wow. I hated this it. This is a hot take. I it, it is. It's, it, well, I mean, I have R.I.P. higher your standards, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it was just not good. Barbecue is clearly the thing. Barbecue is the thing. It's a truck stop with a barbecue restaurant inside. Um, the, the veggie burrito, it had refried beans and it had black beans. What? Yeah. Why? Exactly. I don't, what are they doing? I don't know I'm what. I'm so confused. It's a very odd choice. Well, you know, it goes back to what I feel about Texas, which is I don't trust your Mexican food. So, yes. mm-hmm. compared mm-hmm. to Colorado's. It was such a Texas place. The bathrooms. <laughs> People talk about the bathrooms. So I love I a nice to bathroom. See the bathrooms. I do love a nice bathroom. And they, they're pretty nice. They're very spacious. The stalls are enormous. Texas sized, you might say. Um, and they have that system. You know the, um, you know at the Cherry Creek Mall parking lot, how they have the red and green lights that are supposed to show you like if there's oh, how free many spaces spots there are? or yeah. uh, not free spaces. They have that at Bucky's too for the stalls, oh. um, but they don't work. Oh. Oh, no. It hasn't been open for a week in these lights. This just does not work. Bummer, because that's a great idea. I know. I totally agree. It was it was kind of nice. Like they 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 put a lot of thought into stuff and they keep it really clean and I don't know. It, it was in good shape, but it was just like a couple things were not not quite not quite hitting. I'll say these road snacks are pretty good. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you try? Happy. I tried them all. Mm-hmm. What the, did, uh, what are your faves? Give us your impressions. I mean, I definitely like the light delights, the meringue things, because they're soft enough that they're. I don't know. They just melt in your mouth, which is mm-hmm. good. Salted caramel churro cashews are pretty good, too. And um, chili cheese and crackers. I'd rather just have chili cheese Fritos, personally. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much how I feel. I think the sweeter things are better. Yeah, but they're not bad. If I was going into Bucky's to get some snacks for the road, I think they have some good options. They're also quite cheap. Like, oh, really? Megan and I were in there. We, we loaded up a cart. We paid maybe $35. We got enough for a meal. They have and a then- cart? They Is did, it like a grocery store? What was it? It was. It was maybe it was a bag. They have something. Yeah. To carry. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well. Slammed. You know, Slammed. Even if the owner's son's a pervert, I love these salted caramel <laughs> churro cashews. They're great. Mm. Paul, I want to ask you though. Mm-hmm. The controversy to me was that if you look at a map, <laughs> mm-hmm. Bucky's is like right by Johnson's Corner, and Johnson's Corner is like famous. In do you Colorado. know Johnson's Corner, Katie? Yes, but I have not been. What do you know about him? Basically, it seems to me that it's another sort of truck stop vibe place. They have food. I was looking at their Facebook page. They have a lot of specials. It looks pretty good. I've heard the cinnamon rolls, cinnamon rolls are, are thing. everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it felt like a direct competition thing to me. Yeah, I definitely think it is. Um, and I think Bucky's is going to win. Yeah. You know, I looked into a little bit on the Johnson's Corner history, and I talked to my mother-in-law, who, as I mentioned, lives like 15 minutes away from this particular yeah. strip of I-25. She says Johnson's Corner hasn't been great in like 15 years. The woman who used to make the cinnamon rolls is uh, Ida May, and she died. Oh. Like, I think in 2010. She took the recipe with her. Yeah. I, I, and then also... Johnson's Corner, it used to be like family owned joint for like 50 years. Yeah. And that's not. what made it famous. So then they had this huge renovation. They got sold. And now it's owned by a, a con- corporation oh. that has a lot of these kind of like truck stoppy side, roadside places. Okay. And they, they, what they did was they wanted to make the Johnson's Corner cinnamon rolls into more of like a consumer packaged good. And make them like widely available. Oh no! So I think the quality went down. I never had a good cinnamon roll from Johnson's Corner personally, and I have stopped there. That makes sense then. Like the preservatives probably went up so that they could package them for longer because they always seem to me like a you know like a big cinnamon roll, like a cinnabun cinnamon roll. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a bummer. Yeah, it's not the same. Um, Bucky sells cinnamon rolls now. <laughs> but, Shots fired. I know it was nice of them not to like build it up into like its own special like area or like try to make that a selling point they were like hidden in a corner they looked awful they're like we're gonna take you down other ways don't worry about your cinnamon rolls (laughs) they so are they so are this place was swamped and it's perfect for northern colorado Hmm. like this is a place where people are going to stop on the way to like the the rig you know for a day of drilling or like pick up an energy drink and then on the way home stop for a barbecue sandwich i think they're going to be making millions for years to come i like your reference to the gas patch there paul since you and i have been reading lauren bobert's autobiography i think you and i are both thinking about that gas patch more often than we normally would Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. uh one last note you might like brie is um they sell art (laughs) 
They sell art at Bucky's. On the way to the bathroom, there's art on the walls, kind of like like Thomas Kincaid style, like cottage, beautiful yeah, cottages, very generic Colorado theme. Adjacently, Jesus for some reason. Yeah, there's you could buy a a painting of the Air Force Seal oh, or my. the Marine Corps Seal. Wow! If you want that, the Air Force one costs uh, three hundred nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. I can guarantee you can get a much better higher quality original piece of artwork from an actual person in Denver for under $300. Yeah. So. Well, and how do you take it home? I have no idea. <laughs> you strap I, I it even... to the top of your car and take it on your road trip. Maybe they got someone there who's like a, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know how that would work. If you want to, if you buy art at Bucky's, <laughs> if you've bought art at Bucky's, let us know. Call in. Tell me why. 5005418 Yeah. Tell Ex- us why. Explain yourself. <laughs> um, Anyway, but you all can tell what I thought. I thought it was kind of a meh, you know, not not super exciting. I don't yeah. really get the hype, but all right. we'll it's see. happening. We'll see. It's fun to be part of something. Okay. Yeah, I always wonder how much of it is everybody is doing this. It's just something to do mm-hmm. also. I think so. It's always fun to get together with other people and be excited about something. It's like fandoms, you know? There's a reason. You love to do something and maybe it is, let's go see this thing. Yeah. Totally. You're right. Katie, that's what it totally is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well... Let's leave it there. We're going to okay. go for one more break and we'll be back with uh, Wins and Fails, a.k.a. Rocky Mountain Highs and Lows. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. All right, and we're back. Time for the best way to end the week. Rocky Mountain highs and lows, a.k.a. wins and fails. Each of us has brought a recent local something we think is a win and another we think is a fail. And we're going to talk about them. Bree, let's do fails first. You want to take us away? Yeah, I... I don't know how to frame this, but there was a story this week about RTD elevator doors will stay open to limit, quote, limit illegal activities, which they don't go into. So we don't know what they are. I'm assuming they're talking about drug use, but I could be wrong. The thing that I White thought collar about, crime. I, I was just like, I, they were just like <laughs> hundreds of crimes happen when the elevator doors are closed. And I'm I'm like, really? What? They just out? pickpocketing a person, then waiting to get to the bottom? Or are they just sleeping? <laughs> or sleeping. Oh, my God, Katie, you're probably right. That's what I always think of. Because they're warm, right? Elevators are usually a warm area. Mm. So that, to me, kind of sucks. But also, I thought about um, having friends with disabilities. Elevators are crucial. (laughs) And often, they are broken. And this feels like an opportunity for an elevator to be broken. (laughs) More often, if it's like being forced to be held open. And I just wonder if this is going to become an accessibility issue. That's my concern. Hmm. Is just we don't really pay enough attention to elevators in, in them being in service as a person who's been stuck in an elevator with my friends who use wheelchairs before and all kinds of buildings, public buildings, RTD things, all kinds of things. And I just worry about it. And I just wonder if it's really worth whatever it is to maybe keep people from sleeping in an elevator. Huh. I just wonder if there's something else we could be doing to make those stations safer. I don't know. Hmm. Just there's a- also in... Colorado in general and Denver specifically, a lack of elevator repair companies. Yes. And that really? leads to a bunch of problems for people. I mean, I hear about it all the time in their apartments. They can't get the elevators mm-hmm. fixed. And so if there was to be a problem, then it would take a very long time to fix it. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that's part of the reason that the elevator problem exists is there's just not enough people to Fix it because you think about it. If you get stuck in an elevator, you push that button and you hope someone is going to help you immediately. Yeah. So huh. I I don't know. Maybe their maintenance plan is is excellent, but RTD's not known for having enough employees. So true remains to be seen. I wonder how that's going to play out. That's yeah. an interesting one. I didn't know that, Katie. That's fascinating. Yeah, and the fire department. This is an outdated statistic, and I've actually been working on updating the statistic. For a time, they were rescuing like six people per day from elevators. And that's huh. kind of a lot. And I mean, not that outdated. Within the last five years, that number existed. Like per day, six people mm-hmm. in the city of yes. Denver. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I wonder. I'd like to hear from other cities what their elevator trapped <laughs> data is. Let's do a comparative study here. 
<laughs> but New York, people are probably getting trapped in New York all the time. I mean, all the also, time. we Hundreds. can, they don't, their subway stations don't even have elevators. I think two of their subway stations do, of all of them. Yeah, I was like, there with my mom who uses a wheelchair sometimes, and we basically couldn't use the subway. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. So, um, all right, Katie, you want to give us your fail? So, my fail this week is the, NCAA selection committee for the two basketball tournaments, the men's and women's. Hmm. This is a bit of indignation for me that both the Colorado State and University of Colorado men's teams had to participate in the first four, which is like, you made it, but you didn't really make it. And you have to play an extra game to make it. And the women's team was projected by pretty much every bracket person to be able to host games in Boulder. And instead, they have to go to Manhattan, Kansas. And <laughs> No yeah. one's getting stuck in those elevators. <laughs> no. no, they're getting stuck in the snow on the way back. <laughs> yeah. So I just think it's Colorado got very undervalued. And the CSU and CU men's teams have already beat their opponents that they had to play. And CSU destroyed their opponent. So I just think... These people went to bed too early for the mountain time zone, and I want them to stay up later next year. Do you think that this is part of this narrative that we have, the problem we have that, like, Denver's not, Colorado's not that cool? People don't want to pay attention to us as much as we think we rightfully probably deserve it? it I do think it's part of that. I also think, you know, being from New Mexico, the, their team kind of had a similar dynamic, and there was this part on CBS that they showed where teams in the mountain time zone did get screwed over. Like four of the nine had to play in these first four tournaments on the men's side. So I just think it's, you know, the conspiracy of like the Denver <laughs> sports market is undervalued for yes. basketball with the Nuggets. And I am with you 100%. <laughs> so they were like play-in games to even make the tournament that they had to play in? Yeah, they call it the first four. And okay. so now... People who go to it, they say, we're in the tournament, but really now you, you have, have to, to get through that to actually Correct. be in the So tournament. now they're both truly in the tournament, and I'm really happy for them. And the women play their first game Friday. So, so it's like, Very cool. we told you so. Very cool. Yeah, this so. this may, this uh, answers a question I had earlier in the week. I was at a bar. Um, I forget what night it is, but it was the night the CU, CSU men's team was playing, and I thought that the tournament hadn't started yet. And I was just very confused. But it was the same time that the Nuggets and Avalanche were playing. The bar was packed. Uh, the food was coming out real slow. There was only one guy back there. Oh, I don't poor think guy. I don't think they had a sense of the, the sports schedule. Um, but uh, the, the, the bar was all reacting to the CSU game, not the Avs and the Nuggets. So, I, so people are psyched. I think it all works together. The excitement that we've had around the Avs and the Nuggets over the last couple of years and like the Coach Prime effect and all these kinds of things make us more excited to be from here. So then we get more invested in, in college sports as well. So It's fun to be part of something. It mm -hmm. is. Exactly. It's the theme it is. of the show today. Um, all right. I think it's about time for yeah, time for my fail. Yeah, it's your turn, Paul. So I've been doing a little bit of reporting on this and I'm ready to, uh, to talk about it. But um, a few weeks ago, I was at the open house for the, the BRT. That's the new bus rapid transit system that's coming to Colfax. That's going to totally revolutionize the way people move up and down that street. They're going to take yeah. a whole lane, dedicate it for just buses. They're going to come every four to eight minutes. It's going to be really cool for people who live there, which is going to be a lot more people soon because all this development's happening now. Yeah, the now. brand new, those huge projects happening right at like Downing and mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Marion. Um, so anyway, Frank Locantori, our friend at the Colfax bid, he's been telling me that the businesses up and down Colfax are really worried because the construction is sure. going to take a long time. So at the open house, I was talking to folks and I talked to somebody at the uh, the Denver Economic Development and Opportunity Office who, who let slip to me that there was a program, a city program to support the businesses in just this exact situation. Um, and then I later clarified with their press person, in 2019, the city of Denver had a three-year pilot program, the Business Impact Opportunity Fund, that was for businesses initially affected by the I-70 um, project, the expansion that we were talking about earlier. Um, so that, that pilot project ended, and then they continued it with uh, federal pandemic money. But then last fall, when they were doing the budget process and looking at you know, what projects what, to fund yeah. and what to not fund. They knew this was coming up obviously on B, uh, for BRT and no, nothing, no money 
No money for this project. Uh, no money for these businesses. My eyes are on Councilperson Hines here a little bit. This is your district. Yeah, I mean, he, he was not at the open out? house. I would have loved to have <gasps> talked to him about that. He wasn't at the open house? Uh, there Maybe were people his, who oh, okay, said they've talked to people from his office. I, I think he's involved. I emailed Chantel Lewis's office, Councilwoman Lewis, former RTD board member. I have not heard back from them about this, why this program did not get funded. Um, but anyway, the person from the, the the Economic Development Office, they did say that they are going to be looking at this for in 2025 budgeting this fall. And they think it's, they say it's top of mind, but I don't know. I mean, these businesses, they <sighs> might not last. They might not last. And we have to remember the fabric of Colfax is so much informed by the businesses that are there and they are what their characters in the neighborhood as much as anything else you know what i mean yeah the lion's lawyers the pete's kitchens even like the smaller more in or independent newer spots like learned lemur and you know like we want those things to survive they've really created what colfax makes colfax colfax i mean frank logan tory can speak about this at length but that without those things it's it just changes everything so yeah. i hope that that gets figured out because we need those businesses yeah i mean colfax is going to oh, change radically I'm thinking about all my favorite with herbs this and arts line. i know there's so many boards. there's yeah. so many and and they will oh. not to be bring up albuquerque again but they <laughs> they did this in albuquerque it's called the art the albuquerque rapid transit on a sort of the i would say the colfax of albuquerque it's called central and they lost a lot of businesses. Oh, and that, for really? me, has always been my fear. I live right off Colfax. So it would be amazing for me. I take the 15 yeah. all the time. Like, I would love it. But I think about it, and it does worry me because I know, I mean, that's what happened in my hometown, and now I'm seeing it again, and it does really stress oh, me out. Man. Oh, my God. It's it's something we're going to have to keep talking about and, and keep thinking about, I think, as, as the year goes on. I mean, it's not going to be every business, but... You know, for the ones that are that are having tight margins. I mean, like, we just came out of a pandemic. We got to be realistic, especially for those smaller businesses. Like, we can't make it any harder for them. Yeah. So, yeah. Ugh, well, that is a bummer. Well, that was my fail. Um, let's move on to wins. Uh, Katie, why don't you take it away for us? Give sure. Us a win. My win this week is I wrote about this for Westward. There is a pair of nesting bald eagles oh, yeah. at the Broken Tea Golf Course in Inglewood. And it's just one of those really happy situations where they noticed the eagles were nesting. They talked to Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They moved around the course a little bit to protect them. And I just think it's really great that, you know, sometimes people do the right thing. And now if you golf there, you can see some bald eagle heads they're poking out of the nest and they're really cute what oh a draw gosh. for the golf course i know but they're like kind of worried because they're like don't just go out there <laughs> right, right? Just <laughs> wander onto the course <laughs> right like as usual if you're not actually golfing don't go on the golf course but if you like to golf and you like bald eagles mm. i think you should go there i love that they adapted to mm -hmm. the eagles being there and like figured out how to make it a safe environment for them. That's awesome. Yeah, that is cool. I love that. Uh, we do love bald eagles here. We had we watched the Stanley Lake ones too. The real bald eagles of Stanley Lake. We were watching that. <laughs> yeah. And so. I've been now watching like various bald eagles around the country, like bald eagle cams. And it's just really fun. It's kind of nice and calming. Mm -hmm. There's a nice one out at the old um the old nuclear plant, Fort St. Brain, that oh, now is right. a natural gas plant. They have a bald eagle cam. There was a couple of bald eagles in my neighborhood uh, just on the Cherry Creek Trail. They were up on top of a big electrical pole a couple weeks ago. It was great. Just spotted them just on a morning. Yeah, it was fun. Such a great part of this uh, this place. We have those. Um, why don't I go next for a win? Um, so my win, uh, well, first of all, Cherry Creek Trail, you're officially on notice. You are my favorite bike trail in the city, but that could be temporary because the Highline Conservancy announced this week on March 15th uh, that they are receiving $100 million in investments and they're going to be improving the Highline Canal Trail over the next five years with all sorts of cool stuff. New bridges, safer trail crossings, na new neighborhood access points, better signage, more shade, more seating, small pocket parks where oh, people can gather yeah. along the trail. This is from the 5280 Magazine story about this. But this just sounds beautiful. I mean, the Highline Canal Trail, if you've never been on that, it's great. Um, 
It, it is not paved all the way through, so it's not as nice to bike on in every spot as well, the Cherry Creek Trail. Soon. But soon, it sounds like it's it's on the up and up. That's that's my win this, this week. This is another one I considered as a win. Oh, yeah? Because it's just so exciting. Like, when do you hear $100 million yeah, for that? Something like for that. a trail? Oh, it's so right. cool. It's, it, I'm really excited about it. It's one of those cool public benefit things. Everybody can utilize it. Mm-hmm. It's, ugh, that sounds great. Good for them. Good for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, maybe this will push some other trails to get a little, <laughs> a little competition. Grant, yeah, look for some grant money <laughs> to do that too. Uh, all right, Bree, you want to give us a win? Yeah, sure. Um, I just, I've been to the Oriental Theater two times in the last month. And once we're, we went to Dyketopia, Paul, mm. I, most fun. So I've, fun. I, they're the best. I like laugh. So I can't even explain how hard I laugh. They're so incredible. But uh, and then I went to see RX Bandits the other night because my husband's band Rubedo was opening, and um, the staff there is just awesome. The place is awesome. Oriental Theater is one of the last independently owned theaters of its size in the state. Um, they're so kind. Everybody at the, I mean, the door people are nice. The bar is nice. The sound people are nice. And I love it for, it has that lived in vibe. It's an old school theater. It's not fancy. There's nothing fancy about it for sure. And that's what I just love about it. It's also in the middle of a neighborhood. And I think the neighborhood really embraces it. And I just wanted to give a shout out. What a great place. Oriental Theater. I love you guys. You're doing great stuff. Couldn't agree more. One of my favorite places to yeah. see a thing. And they book local. They book tons of local stuff. And it just in an in an age in an era where that just doesn't get as much attention and love from larger venues, they're doing a community service and it's just thank you. You guys rule. Shout out to the Oriental. Katie, you been to the Oriental Theater? Not since college, but I loved it. Oh, it's great. So oh, yeah, no. it's right probably hasn't changed Regis. much, yeah. honestly. <laughs> no, that's you not were true. They, they put did some those upgrades. Paintings. They painted the walls. They repainted the walls. They added some like murals. And a little weird. It, yeah, but you know what? The place is weird. That's what I like about it. It's yeah. totally weird. Um, they got new curtains. They got new lighting. It was beautiful. I mean, the show I saw, like, you know, we saw Dyktopia, which is like, you're not going to utilize the lighting as much. But the RX Bandage show, it was like an experience, just like you would get anywhere else, like a mission or anything. It was cool from the lighting perspective. Sound was great. Just so fun. And it has a balcony. It's a great place. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Love the so. Oriental. Well, that's the show for today. What a fun one. Uh, Bucky's, highways, all the good stuff. <laughs> Katie Cheshire. White you. Claw. White John claw. Wenzel, I'm not mad Can't at you. Forget. I'm not calling you sexist, John Wenzel. You're my friend. It's not your fault that I didn't like that angle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie Cheshire, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. Our producers this week were Natalie Rivera, Olivia Jewel Love, and me, Paul Caroli. Peyton Garcia writes our morning newsletter, Hey Denver. Bree Davies is our host. Mariah McBride helped us out on Instagram. And our music is by Los Mocachetes, with additional mixing by Tyler Lindgren. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at CityCast Denver. And tell Bucky's owner's son, Mitch Wasik, about us the next time you see him. You can sign up for that daily newsletter I mentioned and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. And don't forget, you've got a chance at a brand new CityCast mug. All you got to do is sign up and become a member today. See you next week. Bucky's. Bucy's. I want to call it Bucy's. Bucky's. The spelling is really distressing to me it, it, as someone that works with <laughs> words for a living i feel you and like with this hyphen and then is why is it not capitalized and is the, so the c is making an s sound here but it's making a c sound right before i'm uh-huh. so confused